similar to Jetpack Compose is Flutter, right? I haven't tried out Flutter myself ever. I just completely ignored it because I felt like I already needed enough time learning Android itself. Have you tried out Flutter? And if yes, do you like it? Do you think it's a real competition for native Android development? Or does it even replace it? I have tried it out, not much. I made one note app with it. And but talking about Flutter, I really like it because you just have one code base. You, you have an iOS and an Android app. Of course, that, that's a huge advantage compared to just native development. The thing I don't like about Flutter is the language it uses, which is Dart. Um, it's not fun. It reminds me of Java all the time because it's so similar. And if you're used to writing Kotlin code, then you won't enjoy Dart because it's it's just less beautiful. In Kotlin, you have so many cool things and syntactical sugar, which you don't have in Dart. Um, so if you like Dart, then I think Flutter is a very great option to make apps. Of course, there are limitations and things native is better at, which is like uh, where if you do stuff close to hardware, using sensors, media playback, all that stuff, um, Flutter can do that natively. So for Flutter, you need kind of plugins, and these plugins need to be written in native language. So there's always native language somehow involved, and you should also have a rough understanding of native if you use Flutter. But overall, for I think for most apps, Flutter is also a good option, especially if an app is only dealing with data. So you have a database and a, an API, which is very often the case, and not more than that. Then Flutter apps can can surely do that. But I'm I'm still more a fan of native development, and maybe also KMM if it comes out. Yeah, um, I agree that not using Kotlin on Flutter is a bit of a turn off. But yeah, we have. Kotlin multi-platform now. Yeah. And by the way, what does KMM stand for? Because it doesn't stand for Kotlin multi-platform. Kotlin multi-platform mobile. Ah, okay. So the idea is to uh, share code between uh, iOS and Android mm -hmm. and have apps for both and have some shared code. Have you played around with KMM yet? <laughs> I've, I've tried it once. So the thing is, if you actually also want to make the iOS app, then you need a Mac for that because you need to write the iOS UI in Swift and the rest of the code is shared. So business logic, data layer, Android UI is all written in Kotlin and the iOS UI in Swift. Um, because I don't have a Mac yet, I can't fully explore KMM, but I have tried around with it a bit. I created a project and just checked how that looks like. I didn't finish it. Um, I think right now it's, uh, when I tried that, it was Android Studio Canary version. So right now it was a pain to get the versions right because you have iOS dependencies, Android dependencies, and Android Studio Canary destroyed a lot. So I think that's now better with the stable version. Most dependency issues were with Compose and Compose beta versions. Apart from that, I think it's a really, really fun way to make apps in future. And that will actually be, if we talk about the, the cross-platform and multi-platform frameworks, that will be the one that I think I will enjoy the most in future and that I will dive into. So my plan is to, to get a MacBook at the start of next year, probably. And then I also plan to make some tutorials about that because it's also a good skill to have if you're freelancing, to just be able to make an app for iOS and Android together. So um, with KMM around, it means that native Android development will probably not use much popularity to Flutter because it's a way to, uh, it's still native, right? Because we have this platform specific code. Yes. And we just share other parts of code that are the same for both clients. And I think for me, this seems like a more interesting approach than uh, these complete cross platform yeah. frameworks that do everything. Because as you said, the, you get problems as soon as you try to do platform specific stuff and then you depend on these plugins. So I yeah. think learning native Android right now with the option to uh, go into a Kotlin multi-platform later seems to be the most interesting and most attractive approach right now. I think for native developers, that is the case. Um, a lot of people also ask me that. I also recently made a Q&A on YouTube where I also had that question if, if native development will die or so, and I don't think so. I mean, sure, it might be the case that cross-platform will have a wider audience of, of developers, but that doesn't mean native dies. There will always be a place for native and especially for these um, special use cases I talked about, like uh, media playback and all that stuff. There will be companies and clients who need exactly such an app. 
And if you are someone who can say, hey, I really know native development and I am specialized on these things, then you are one among very few. And that means you can charge more. And yeah, that's, uh, that's better if you are in a, in a huge market of, of uh, developers who do uh, cross-platform, in my opinion, just being specialized. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Even if native Android development would lose popularity, which I don't think even then it's good to be that specialized person that knows how to do this if a company needs someone. And also, if you, we already talked about that, if you really understand something, then it's easy for you to also adapt to other technologies. Right. So I think if I would now get into Flutter and if I would really want to learn it, then that would be a matter of one to two months until I can build some more solid apps with that. Yeah, and Flutter has been around for a while now and I never felt like native was losing popularity because of that. It's just not the image I get when I look through the communities. Yeah, and I know also that, yeah. A, a lot of popular native Android developers who are hating quite yeah, a lot I was about Flutter, to say like the Jake same. Wharton. I was about to say exactly the same. Jake Wharton really uh, hates Flutter. <laughs> he uh, has a lot of uh, aggressive comments about it. I don't know how correct they are, but considering that he's Jake Wharton, I... Uh, He's working uh, so, in the native Android yeah, developer team. He knows a lot of stuff. So, uh, um, so yeah, the bottom line is that if you were, are interested in Flutter, by all means, go ahead, try it out. And it's probably a good choice for simple apps that you just quickly want to uh, d- develop for both platforms. And you don't need a Mac for Flutter, right? You can... No. You, this is one good point because Macs are expensive as we know. I mean, technically, you also don't need a Mac for KMM, but if you don't have one, you can only make the Android app, but it will still be a fully working Android app. Okay. But but what I want to say is, if you, uh, the viewer is interested more in native Android development and you want to get a job, then you don't have to be scared that Flutter no. will take this away from you. Not I in think. the next uh, five years, at least. 